When I was 14 years old, uh, several years ago, my father uh, uh, sat me down uh, and after telling me about uh, the national debt and how in just a very few years it was going to overthrow the country and uh, we wouldn't be able to buy and sell anymore, um, uh, that was of course, uh, goodness, uh, now 50, almost 50 years ago. The, um, the second thing he told me is something that I've found to be true uh, all my life, and that is that every single administration, Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. A general truth that is generally true is that they will spend every penny that the country has to spend, and then they will spend all the money that the country can possibly borrow uh, on that principle, all the money they can possibly leverage. And that is true. Uh, Donald Trump spent huge amounts. President Bush spent huge amounts. Clinton was the last person, person to balance the budget, uh, and that lasted no time. They tried that thing where they would hold themselves ransom uh, uh, to balance the budget. That didn't work. They had to throw that away. Uh, President Biden is, of course, spending money, money to uh, recover from, from Trump's terrible performance, uh, self-serving performance during the COVID uh, pandemic. The, but the point is, every administration, uh, by and large, will spend every penny that they possibly can, plus every penny they can borrow. Why is that? Because people everywhere, everywhere, everybody wants to get stuff. Everybody wants to keep the blessings flowing. Everybody wants to have beautiful interstates and fantastic sewer systems. And everybody wants to, of course, to have a good water system to bring water into their homes and take the sewage away. And everybody wants all kinds of things but... And here's, here's the trick. Nobody wants to pay for it. Um, there are many other countries that are different. They live within their means. Uh, well, in a sense, they have to because their credit isn't as good uh, as ours. And therefore, they, uh, uh, they have to be more careful how they spend their money. But we don't have to be careful. We don't have to be careful how we spend our money. We, we talk about our sovereign debt, our national debt, but the trick is there is no safer place in the world to put money than United States bonds or treasury notes. There is no safer place in the world. There is no stronger country and, uh, uh, there's nobody in second place uh, either. Uh, there's a tie for third and fourth place. Uh, you, China talks about how much it's growing, and it is, it's growing. But whenever you see a statistic that says, this is the fastest growing this, or this is the fastest growing that, take into account that if you have one person and you get one more person, that's a 100% growth rate. My goodness, what a fantastic, amazing, uh, it's two people. Uh, for, for, for example, the fastest growing sport is, well, yeah, that means instead of a hundred people attending the event, you've got 180 people, an 80% increase. Wow. Um, mm. uh, figures don't lie, but liars misrepresent. Uh, they select the facts and manipulate, uh, and manipulate the truth. We all want stuff. Nobody wants to pay for it. Now, here's the trick. Newt Gingrich, in the early 90s, introduced the Republican Party into a fast, cheap, simple, easy way to gain power and money. What you do is you tell people who to fear and who to blame. And from that point on, it's... it's it's been a process, but it was a very quick process that you have this divide in Congress where if, uh, 
the the districts can be so gerrymandered that if you take the slightest step to a to reach across the aisle and accomplish something, then you are going to be primaried, and it's going to be tough to win the next uh, election because the uh, blue districts are are royal blue, and the red districts are scarlet, scarlet red. And therefore, you see very often the people who are willing to reach across the aisle, and I keep on using my beloved uh, Rob Portman as, as an example, they're willing to reach across the aisle because they've said they're not running for re-election. <laughs> they can do the right thing with impunity. Um, so that, that but the, the situation is everybody wants stuff. Nobody wants to pay for it. Now, in the end, when you dance to the tune, you have to pay the piper. Now, the Republican Party does not want to pay the piper. When you have used uh, immoral and uh, foul, ugly, really slimy Newt Gingrich means of scorched earth politics to tell your constituency that you must fear and blame people that brought the uh, weekend to you or that did away with child labor or tried to extend uh, civil rights protections ah! or, uh, or tried to extend voting rights to individuals. You must fear and blame these people, the people that brought you uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a public that is largely able to read. Oh my goodness, we don't want that. They might start getting ideas. Oh. Um, uh, and conservatives have always been against progress of any sort. Uh, they're willing to make changes so long as the changes benefit the people who are wealthy already. Now the Republican Party has reached the point where either they can crash and burn, in other words, work toward minority rule by further gerrymandering and uh, suppressing the ability of Americans to vote, unless they are Republicans, of course. Um, the Republican Party is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. The last people they've got to vote for them is people who look like me. Um, uh, old white guys and old, some old white women too. Um, but, but the young generation coming up, they're sick. They're, they're sick of what they've seen from the Republican Party and they're ready to jettison the Republican Party. They're losing uh, their constituents by the truck full. Now, there's two things you can do. You can either stand up and try to appeal to the people of the country and say, look, here's some ideas that we have to make things better for the country. Or you can uh, ask Russia to help you win elections. And if Russia thinks that that will work toward the destruction of your political system, they will help you. Absolutely. Putin is only interested in destroying democracy so that he can show that authoritarianism is the way to go. Um, he's not helping Trump because he wants to help you, anybody or you or me. And Republicans are do not care about gun rights or abortion or religious liberties. Uh, they do not care. They care about power and money. And these are merely ways to lead the constituents by the nose. You don't stop abortion by, uh, by constricting the supply you, um, like uh, Texas is doing uh, right now. When you constrict the supply, that just increases the demand. And in America, where there is sufficient demand, there will be supply. We're in America, folks. Um, when you constrict the supply, you have prohibition. That is exactly what conservatives do uh, in all their plans that they want to accomplish. They attack the supply. Democrats, on the other, on the other side, attack the actual problem. They attack the demand. How do you stop abortion? By providing medical care for all women. 
you you stop abortion by providing uh, affordable quality child care so that a woman who decides uh, to have a child does not have to take into consideration that she is resigning herself to 20 years of poverty uh, in order to do so. That is a huge ask for an individual. If you want to stop smoking, you get Ricky Ricardo and Lucille Ball to stop smoking on television. You get uh, Humphrey Bogart to stop smoking on television. You get... It is very difficult to find any actor on television today that will smoke on television unless he's portraying a very bad person. Even the very bad people. It's difficult to find someone who's smoking. You, you change the demand by changing the culture and and working to provide for people so that the demand goes away. And that's how you deal with abortion. Uh, but Republicans are going to want to increase the demand for abortions by increasing poverty, which is always, uh, and, it's a, and it's a twofer, uh, because one, you can attack women, ha <laughs> ha, those nasty women, uh, and you can make women poorer across the country. Republicans have danced to the tune of blaming and fearing for, goodness, 40 years they've been doing this. And they've made a lot of money. And they've uh, gained a lot of rabid supporters on the lunatic fringe. Now they've come to the point where they can either pay the piper by looking at the problems that they've created. I'll never admit they created it, but uh, looking at the problems they created and try to expand their constituency by addressing the problems that the country has, or they can continue to double down on blame and fear. It's worked for 40 years, might continue to work. But the problem is it's a, it's, it's a, pyramid scheme there's only so much money to go around and then they start eating each other besides spitting and stomping on the oath they took to protect and defend the constitution here's the point the point is that republicans have taken the fast cheap simple easy immoral way of newt gingrich to say, if I can eat you, then I have the right to eat you. If I can destroy you, then I have a right to destroy you. That is not true. That is fascism. That is authoritarianism. If I have the guns, then I have the right to tell you what to do. The, uh, and now it's time to pay for it. It's starting to fall apart. Are you going to double down? Or are you going to pay the piper? And I think we all see the direction that the Republican Party is moving. And as each of the Republicans in Congress hide under their desks, either, either shut up and don't say anything, or else run onto the bandwagon and say, yes, yes, oh, oh, Mr. Trump, yes, yes, you are our authority. We will do whatever you say. Yes, yes, but it will come to the point in the end for these men that he, through that Putin, through Trump, will tell them to do something that they won't or cannot do. And therefore, these Republicans that are staying quiet, hoping just to bide their time. Maybe it'll all turn out all right. Maybe it'll all turn out okay. Putin is working hard to make sure that we do not have a democracy in 10 years. And they, these Republicans who are being quiet, they're already on the list. They are already on the list of people whose lives will be the targets. There is no honor among thieves. Ask Mike Pence 
hang Mike Pence, they said, on January 6th. He had pandered and truckled and lick-spittled to Trump. Oh, just pitifully. There is no honor among thieves. There is no loyalty. Trump will turn on every one of them the first time that he tells them to do something and they simply refuse to do it. Ask James Comey. Ask anyone on whom Trump has turned on a dime and worked to destroy them. 